and welcome to the adventures of a regression therapist with me Steve Burgess and my colleague Monique Glover. Uh, the purpose of these uh, impromptu informal chats is to um, share with you a some information about uh, regression as a concept and particularly past life regression uh, because that's something that um, Monique and myself and my team members all specialize in and uh, what we're wanting to do is to share some regression stories and to give you a, a sort of a bigger picture of the world of regression what it is how it works etc etc so we're going to be just doing some relatively informal chats um, and uh, putting them out on hypno for all and um, hopefully you'll find them interesting. That's the concept. So, Monique, what would you like to ask me as a as a as a fledgling client, somebody who's relatively new to um, hypnotherapy and regression? Fire away. Okay. So imagine, imagine I'm a new client. I know nothing about hypnotherapy, about hypnosis. Oh, oh hello, cat. Thank you. <laughs> They, they, thank you for joining us today. <laughs> the, the cat would like to know, Steve, what what is what is hypnotherapy? What is hypnosis? What is regression therapy? How does this all work together? What do all these things mean to me? Well, hypnosis, hypnotherapy, hypnosis is uh, this inner state of being. We call it a trance. That's our jargon word is to go into trance. And the state of trance is in a hypnotherapy setting, generally uh, a relaxed state. So in most cases, somebody, when they're in a hypnotic trance, they're in a relaxed state. And what that state of relaxation does, it allows the subconscious part of the mind, the deep inner part of the mind to, you could say, it starts to come through from the back part to the front part of the mind. And the conscious thinking mind takes a little bit of a back seat. And what this does, it allows us then to work with the powerhouse of the mind, the engine room of the mind, the 99.999% of the mind that we don't usually use on a day-to-day -day basis, and use that powerhouse of the mind in order to help heal people with various issues. So the therapy in hypnotherapy is what we do when somebody is in a hypnotic state in order to create a healing of some sort for them. So that's the concept of hypnotherapy. Um, I usually explain the idea of the, the conscious mind and the subconscious mind by talking about the, uh, the mental iceberg. And basically, if you think of an iceberg, the tip of the iceberg above the waves is the conscious thinking mind. Uh, and that's the part of the mind that anybody who's listening to this now will be analyzing with and thinking, is that right? Does it, et cetera, et cetera. And they're using the, the conscious mind in order to, uh, to understand what, what, what we're saying. But beneath the surface of the waves is the subconscious, the 99.9% .9 of the mind that we don't overtly use on a day-to-day -day basis. And our subconscious is, it's awesome. It's a powerhouse. Uh, it's the seat of our em emotions. It's the seat of our intuition. It's the seat of our creativity. It's the seat of our imagination. It contains all the memories that go way, way back. And so this is why hypnotherapy as a therapeutic process is so damned powerful. Because when somebody is using the powerhouse of the mind, then they're more likely to get a very good result. Um, and so basic or standard hypnotherapy is really about uh, using what we call post-hypnotic suggestion therapy. And what we're doing in that is we're taking a client into trance, we guide our clients into trance, into a relaxed state, and then usually we're feeding the subconscious with positive suggestions. And the idea then is that the subconscious takes those suggestions on board uses the suggestions in a positive way to help somebody to change. So we do a lot of that with weight loss hypnosis and with stop smoking hypnosis, etc. Um, and the aim of that, the, the, the subconscious is influenced by repetition. So the more someone hears something, the more it goes into the subconscious. Now that works negative as well as positive. So um, if in childhood we are continually being told that we are shy or we're no good at maths or in some cases we're stupid, 
with repetition, the child starts to believe that and they become shy or they become no good at maths. So that's a negative way of programming the subconscious. The positive way, and those people who have been on Hypno for All and had heard any of my recordings, my uh, hypnotherapy recordings, will know that they're just relaxing while I'm guiding them through lots of different positive suggestions and visualizations. Mm. So that's standard hypnotherapy. But regression, and this is the exciting part of hypnotherapy, as you and I know, Monique, um, is where we are using the subconscious to heal issues from the past by going back into the causes of those issues. And um, we find that the, the regression model, all of our issues come from locked in feelings and emotions from past traumas. And it's a question of going back into those traumas to release them. So regression simply means to go back into the past. And in a hypnotherapy uh, regression perspective, it means to go back into the past in trance, in this inner state, to go back to the emotional traumas that have caused the issues that we're, that we're living with or that are holding us back and stopping us from living our lives freely. Mm. Mm. So tell me what sort of things is it useful for? Why why should I see you or a member of the team? What what can this help me with in my life? The incredible thing is that every issue that we have as human beings in the regression model is caused by locked in feelings and emotions from past traumas. So Depression, lack of confidence, anxieties, phobias, relationship issues, sexual issues, physical problems. Um, we work a lot with physical issues because every physical problem, whatever it is, has, has emotional causes. Of course, you know, you and I are very much into Louise Hay and you can heal your life and the concept that every physical problem has emotional causes so in order to cure the physical problem you you go into the physical causes and release the uh, it, into the emotional causes and release them so that the physical gets better so any issue skin problems um i'm missing a few tell me some more as well that i'm missing i mean there's lots of it, just, any issue can come from the, the past mm -hmm. Skin, skin and IBS, I find IBS, been you. a lot recently. Yeah, yeah. It's almost yeah. like these waves of things will come all at once. And yes, that there's been quite a lot of um, research into hypnotherapy and IBS, and it's used extensively with IBS, can be incredibly successful. Um, and my IBS recordings on Hypno for All, I think, get more hits, more views than any other recordings. And it uh, shows just how widespread that particular problem is for people. Do you find that's a hard connection to make that the emotions are causing a physical, that it's not such a big leap to think, okay, my emotions are causing mental distress, but for my emotions to be causing me to have IBS or the skin rash, do you find that's a hard jump for people to make? It it's more easy nowadays than it was. Mm. You know, I mean, I've been doing it 31 years and you can imagine 31 years ago, people thought I was doing voodoo <laughs> or rattling bones or something, you know, because that's what, it's amazing how we've come on in the last 30 odd years. Um, and I think also that the medical model is losing its grip really. It's trying to hold on as much as it can. You know, the medical model that every physical problem is something chemical or organic and you put a tablet in there or you cut it out in some way. Um, more and more people are understanding the emotional causes of issues. Um, and of course, as you, people like ourselves work with clients, get results um, and they heal from their physical issues, uh, the more they spread the word that, um, you know, and it, it's a it's a long lasting cure as well. It isn't just a, something that works for a short time. So I think the word is getting out, but it's slow, but you know, we, we're working to, to promote the, this new paradigm of healing, mm. which is about putting chemicals inside people. It's about working on the emotional level. I mean, just last year, I had an, an elderly gentleman in the UK who was in his seventies and he had really bad back pain. 
very bad, very bad back pain. He'd had it for many years and he was really struggling. I mean, getting in and out of, up and down out of a chair was so painful for him. Uh, and the pain was there all the time. And his subconscious, once he went into trance, uh, indicated that there was a past life causing this back pain. And he went back into a past life where he was a man and he was in battle. And somebody came up behind him with a big sword, so it was a medieval time, and stabbed him in the back. And when the sword went in, he, he, he sort of moved in the chair because, you know, he felt this, he didn't feel the pain, but he felt the energy of what had happened. And he let out a big sort of yell because it was quite a shock. And then he died in the past life. Um, and that was the cause of the back pain. So um, and what is we do, as you know, Monique, we go back several times then in that past life to clear the full energy. So I took him back a few times. But I think after three or four times when the sword went in, there was no feeling, no response. And the back pain was completely cured. Mm -hmm. So that's basically how it works. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you mentioned going back, that we are regressing, we're going back. What are we going back to? You briefly mentioned past lives. Is there anything else that we're going back to where these emotions are? Yeah. So in the regression model, the regression world, we're working in three areas. This lifetime, past lives, our ancestors' lives. So for some of my clients, some of our clients, we're working in just in this lifetime. And of course, most people have got emotional baggage from this present life. Um, it said, I mean, John Bradshaw, the father of inner child therapy, and we both know how wonderful inner child therapy is, the healing of our inner child from childhood wounds in this life. He states that only 4% of people are truly functional. And that means that 96% of us are screwed up in some way. Yeah, that's a pretty um, small percentage. <laughs> well, I've been around a long yeah. time on earth and I've, I've, yet, I've only ever met one person, I think, who I would say is truly functional. Um, and he Makes you not feel so low that people are dealing with a lot of their own stuff too, right? <laughs> yeah. We've all got stuff. We all have emotional baggage. And so um there is a lot of, lot to be done in this lifetime mm -hmm. some clients have past life traumas and we can inherit traumas from our ancestors in our bloodline from our parents our grandparents our great grandparents our great great grandparents they can go back several generations usually the shamanic um, way of thinking is that they go back up to seven generations uh, occasionally i have found familial gene genealogical traumas going back further than that but usually it isn't further past uh, seven generations so for some clients we're working in all three areas um and but just to regress just means to go back in the past to your thoughts i mean i had a client who came with a dog phobia many years ago and she was terrified of dogs i mean she really was terrified of dogs she she could hardly leave her house. She was almost housebound, almost a prisoner in her house because she was so terrified of being out in the streets and there being any dogs. Um, if she went into a city to go shopping, she had three or four people with her to stand around her just in case she saw a dog. And guess what? Whenever there was any dog in the city centre, they came to see her. <laughs> because she was sending out such a yeah. strong energy she brought them back to her and um, I asked her so how long have you had this problem for and she said it's all all my life I've had it all of my life she said even since I was a child but it's got worse as I've got older and she was about to go on holiday to visit her daughter in the states for a few weeks and she said well we went to my daughters last year and they had to put their dog in the kennels and she said that's not really fair on the dog it's not fair on my daughter's family i guided her into trance and her subconscious indicated that there was a childhood memory causing this phobia and i took it back and she went back and suddenly as she's laid in the chair in trance she suddenly went oh i'm I'm remembering I'm about I'm about two years old um I'm about two and mommy's mommy wants to take me to the park to see the ducks oh she says oh 
and it was all nice. And she said, Mummy's put me in the in the buggy in the push chair, and she strapped me in. She straps me in and she's taking me to the park. And she had a big smile on her face. And then I said, Okay, so what happens next? She said, I'm at the park. And she said, Mummy's put me in front of the duck pond to see the ducks. And she puts the brakes on the buggy and she's gone off to talk to a friend of hers. And my client was very calm and very happy for a minute or so. And then all of a sudden she started to go very tense and become extremely tense. And her whole body came, was rigid. And she started to go like this. I said, what's happening? She said, there's a dog, there's a dog, there's a dog. And he's sniffing me, he's sniffing me. And then in her imagination, she did what she did as a child. She batted the dog away from her. And the next thing she was crying and screaming, oh no, no, it's bit me, it's bit me, oh no, it's bit me, oh! Etc. Etc. So basically, when she was two, she'd hit the dog because it was sniffing her, and it just bit her on the face. And of course, she couldn't get out of the pushchair. She was strapped in. She was, she was trapped. And of course, mommy came over and petted her and got rid of the dog, etc. But that was the cause of the phobia. Mm -hmm. And we release that emotion. It wasn't fun for her, but this isn't fun therapy. But it's effective therapy. We went back through it a couple of times after that. We completely removed the energy from that memory. So uh, at the end of the session, she was able to relive the memory, but there was no fear. The fear had completely gone. Mm. Uh, we, we call that neutralizing the fear. Mm. And she came out of trance and she was obviously shocked, but she said, I remember that now. I've, I've, rem I've forgotten about that memory all of my life. I think the lady was about 60 at that time. So she'd, she'd lost the memory for 50 years. And we call that a repressed memory, which usually are poisonous memories. We don't get many repressed memories, but the, when we do, they usually have a depth of ch emotional charge. And um, so she was fine after the, after the session. She was a bit shocked, obviously, but she felt very good. And I asked her to think about dogs and there was nothing, no no zzz inside her she was just yeah it was okay anyway she left my office and then um it was about six weeks later there was a knock on my office door uh, and this lady was there one morning and um she said i've come to tell you i went on holiday to my daughter's not a problem and she had some photographs she brought with her and in one of the photographs she's sitting with the dog with its head on her lap and in the other photograph, and it's a big dog. She was sitting with her arm around this bloody big dog <laughs> in the back of the car. So obviously she was over the moon because it, it, it had been fixed, it had been sorted. Uh, and I've still got those photographs somewhere in my family cabinets from what, 20, 20 odd years ago. So that's an example of regression into this life. Uh, but the regression process is the same, whether we go into a past lifetime or whether we go into an ancestor's life. And when we're in an ancestor's life, we're usually reliving an event as though we are the ancestor. Mm. And it's fascinating. It's just fascinating. Not for us. We're so lucky as therapists, aren't we? <laughs> because we experience these things day after day with our clients. But it's fascinating for the clients as well. It's, you know, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it is. It's fascinating on both ends. Make, makes good stories after <laughs> when they get back to their friends and family of especially when you're comparing notes I find when clients go back into ancestors and these are recent ancestors and they go back and they ask their parents and I had a client she went back into her mom's life and she went and talked to her mom and this was something she experienced in her teenage years as her mom and her mom just looked at her in awe and said how did you know that how did you know that's exactly what happened? That's exactly what happened to me. You had, she had no way of knowing it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that yeah. happens so often. It's quite extraordinary, isn't it? We, we, yeah. we oh, yeah. and, and clients have, can't believe it. They say, but it, so this is real. You know, yeah. they've maybe gone from our, our they've maybe finished a session and well, I used to say on my office, but what you, will you work with clients in your office? I know, but, and we both do online work, but, um, you know, at the end of a session, many clients are a little bit mystified, you know, was that, did I make that up? And then they go away and, as you say, parents, grandparents corroborate and say, yeah, absolutely, that happened. And they, they always say that, how on earth did you know that? And it proves the reality of this stuff.
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I have a question about going into the trauma because I know we get asked this all the time and it's something that can be um, almost a bit controversial sometimes about going into the trauma. So tell me, we're going into the trauma. Is, is that dangerous at all? I think we get asked in those terms, is it dangerous to go and re-experience this trauma, to even re-experience the energy of the pain? Yeah, good point. The first thing is it isn't fun therapy. Mm-hmm. So it takes a lot of courage to do this work. And I admire all of my clients because it does take courage because they're moving into the unknown, of course. But as long as the work is done properly, then it isn't dangerous. In fact, it isn't dangerous anyway. But um, if it's done properly, it doesn't make a person feel worse. Mm-hmm. So by properly, uh, what I mean is, and, and the, the regression system that we use and uh, as my team uh, is the system that I've created over the years where the subconscious guides us through to where we need to go. It tells us how many past lives, where we need to go, um to actually cure these issues and clear the issues and the subconscious first of all is is happy to do this because we always check is it okay for us to work in this way and as long as the subconscious says yes it's okay then that's basically the all wise part of the client saying yes this is okay and then the reliving of the trauma now is there's so many different experiences for some clients all they do is they see something and they, they get a little bit tense and that's the that's the therapy process and it heals the issue. Other clients become quite emotional. For some clients, the body shakes or moves, especially if they're releasing fear or anxiety. And occasionally, and it is occasionally, we get the clients who really do go into the trauma in a big way and they're screaming and yelling and writhing. But they're the clients who get better very quickly because they're releasing the energy of the trauma very quickly. And as long as the client is allowed to do that, then it releases the trauma, it releases the energy. When regression doesn't work, it doesn't work often if the therapist is not properly trained and is scared of clients who go into emotional stuff. I've heard of therapists who, if a client becomes emotional, then bring they bring the client out of the emotion. So you shouldn't do that. No, no, no. Well, hang on. <laughs> You've brought somebody out of an emotional state trauma and then it's there you haven't worked on it to release it so it means that it's it the stuff is up we would say and it means it's then with the client for several weeks perhaps afterwards Mm. but the the main feature of this is it works if you go back through the trauma and re-release it until there's no energy in it and it's very simple Uh, and it isn't fun but it gets rid of the energy and uh, as you know the metaphor i always use is that The therapy process, regression process, is about releasing the energy out of the emotional pressure cooker. Mm -hmm. We all and and what's happening is that all the pressure in our emotional pressure cooker is bubbling away all the time, and we're reacting to it all the time. The regression process takes the lid off the pressure cooker, lets some pressure out. At the end of the session, we we put the lid on, and there's less pressure, and this space is healing and freedom and well-being and the more therapy we do the more we drop the pressure until that pressure cooker is really full of freedom and healing so it is safe to do this as long as the therapist knows what they're doing Um, unfortunately not all therapists get trained properly in regression Uh, i I know that some therapists still do a one-day training course in regression that's not safe (laughs) (laughs) got to do at least a day and a half but, um, but you know you, you've got to do more regret you've got to do the regression properly then it's safe but it is safe to go back into the traumas and virginia satia the wonderful family consolations therapist she, virginia always used to say nobody dies from crying hmm. and the regression concept the cause of all of our issues locked in feelings and emotions if we can release the emotions then the the problem the issue gets better yeah. although there are other ways in which regression works and we'll probably talk about those in other discussions but that's the regression model i wonder if it speaks to a greater picture of us as humans or maybe even as a society that there is that fear to go into those 
emotions as well too especially the negative that it's okay to go into the positive but we often try to avoid the negative numb it out take something to cover it up and we do our best to not go into that which like you said it only builds up that pressure more or we're not allowed to cry you know as children especially as little boys that you're taught very early on that it's not safe to show these emotions that maybe the adults around you think are not good even anger right as a child throwing a tantrum that a lot of those things are shut down very early on mm -hmm. we always take the line of least resistance as human beings yeah <laughs> it's just something in us yeah. it's easier to look away from the unpleasant stuff and just to focus on the positive but of course there are whole therapy processes and the therapy schools which are all about focusing into the positive uh, and there's nothing wrong with focusing into the positive the problem is if you've got this bloody great big backpack on your back which is full of crap weighing you down then yeah. you've got to carry that and be positive at the same time Actually. which makes it harder <laughs> so it, it means that the positive either doesn't work or it's less effective mm -hmm. empty the backpack then you're lighter and then the positive stuff works much more easily and much more readily Mm -hmm. so but you're quite right it's a partly a, a societal thing I think and especially for men and um, I mean as we both know probably 75 percent of our clients are female uh, yeah. because women are much more open in therapy and men tend to be controllers as well and stiff up a lip and nothing wrong with me uh, type of thing but my belief is that men die younger than women because they lock their emotions in that's my belief women release emotions more easily and therefore they live longer mm. it's just a belief and it's a thought but it's based on 31 years of therapeutic experience <laughs> it's not something you just came up with this morning while brushing your teeth right <laughs> <laughs> no I like that okay along this thread of being this new client another common question is okay I'm ready. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this not fun therapy, but I know it has its benefits. How, how long, how long is it going to take? How long of a commitment is this? I've, I've tried everything. I've tried all of the therapies under the sun. How long am I expected to be committed to this before I start seeing results? Regression doesn't work for everybody. Nothing works for everybody. So some people just don't seem to regress very easily. And if regression isn't working, the beautiful thing is if it isn't going to work, it doesn't work quickly. Mm -hmm. So what that means is you don't have to have 15 dozen sessions over the next five years and get nowhere. And then the therapist says, I'm sorry, I can't help you. No, if it isn't working, we know very quickly within a few sessions, it isn't working. Then we say, okay, either we as therapists bring some other therapy tools into the process and do something else. Mm -hmm. Or if we do that and it's still not working, we say, okay, we've done our best. This isn't right for you. Maybe try a different therapy. But regression does work for most people. But the number of sessions can vary from one session to many sessions. It all depends on a variety of factors, how good the person is in hypnosis, the depth of the uh, problem, uh, the depth of the, the causes of the problem. There may be several past lives which all need to be worked through. There may be several uh, significant events in this life, etc. Mm -hmm. So we never know. And any therapist who says this will take so many sessions is, I'm sorry to say, really fooling you um, because they, sh they don't know either. And, um, but generally it's a few sessions. It, it, you know, it's not like going to your analyst in the States where you have years of therapy and, you know, every week or every two weeks and builds a nice swimming pool for the psychologist or psychiatrist in the back garden, but it doesn't get you better. It's nothing like that. It's nothing like that at all. Um, some people get better very, very quickly as well with this, which is remarkable. And one of my greatest successes, we all get what we call one hit wonders as therapists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In one session, <laughs> somebody will get better. Yeah. And yeah. we become known as miracle workers, which we're not. We're just using a very powerful therapeutic process. 
Uh, but this happened to me years and years ago. A client came. She was forced to see me. She was an alcoholic, a functional alcoholic. Every day she was at work. She got home at six o'clock in the evening, started drinking. By nine o'clock, she's pissed, absolutely stoned. Um, and she looked like death. You know, she was way overweight. Her skin was in a bad way. She, her asthma was bad. She just didn't have a life. And uh, a friend of hers <clears throat> said, you've got to go and see this Burgess bloke. I'm sure he'll help you. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, um, and she didn't believe her friend. The friend was saying, go and see this Burgess bloke. He'll see, he'll help you. And, a and she's, oh, he's not going to help me. Hypnosis, how's that going to help me? And she came to see me to prove to her friend that I couldn't help her. <laughs> so she sat in front of me in my office in those days and uh, she was very resistant. But I guided her into trance. And in the first session, the subconscious said there was some past life stuff to work on. And she just cried. She just spent the whole session crying in trance. And we didn't see anything. We couldn't see what the past life was. Mm -hmm. And she came out of and she was she was a tough person, you know. She she held on to her emotions. So she was quite shocked day that she'd cried at the end of the session. What, what was that about? You know, I, was, I don't know. You know, we, we didn't see the content of the past life, but it was obviously very emotional. And she went away from my office mystified. But she has never, ever touched a drop of alcohol ever since then. And that must be 25 years ago. I call her Wonder Woman. I think she's wonderful. She's amazing. That's from one. Just one session. one session. Just one session. Yeah. And then she'd been a functional alcoholic for 16 years. But I, I wish it happened like that all the time and we'd all be millionaires, you know. <laughs> but and we never know when it's going to happen. Okay, we did do more regression. And there were other regressions. She was in a First World War. She died in the trenches. Uh, she was a Christian in Roman times and they uh, put her to death in an amphitheater being torn to pieces by lions. But um, that all helped to, to enhance and reinforce the healing. Mm -hmm. But that one session really did the trick. But that's unusual. That is the big one. So going back to your question, there's no how long is a piece of string? We just never know. Yeah. But if we don't get people better, we don't get them better quickly so they don't have to waste time and money. Mm -hmm. it's important but i would suggest you know monique over the time of being doing this and the the regression system that we use i would suggest that we have around about an 80 percent success rate overall mm -hmm. i really would with the stuff we work in provided people see the, the therapy through which is pretty darn high considering that i think a lot of people come and see us as not the first and they're not we're not the first practitioner usually we're the last result it's or the last resort that we've tried all of the things we've tried the conventional route we've tried a lot of unconventional things and you are my last shot at this or i've had this for 40 years and nothing that i've tried is doing it absolutely yeah. so madam client i do hope that my <laughs> words today have convinced you of the efficacy of mm. regression therapy and i do hope you can come and see me as a client sometime <laughs> thank you steve thank you for explaining that i think it's great for people who have never heard of any of this before or think it's all you know crazy voodoo to have it laid out like this and and to get a little bit more information it's hard to jump into this new crazy therapy. So <laughs> I think you've helped to ease a lot of um, thoughts and nerves and common questions that I think we get asked all the time. Yeah. Good. I hope so. And as we continue these discussions, people understand more and more. And uh, yeah, and I'm hoping that we'll share fascinating stories of our regression climate sessions. And they are fascinating. Yeah, we'll get into the juicy parts next, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hang on to your seats, folks. <laughs> Good. Okay. Okay, well, thanks for watching. And uh, thanks, Monique, for being a, a lovely interview. And uh, we'll be back. Bye. <laughs>